All right, all right, me and man, this is uh, John Posey here, Preacher's Trainer, and I'm so glad to be able to share with you this week, uh, this new week, um, with men of honor, bringing out the best in men, and guys, that's what we're we're here to do. We're to bring we're we are committed to bringing out the absolute best. We're still in our pre-launch, um, our pre-launch uh, this this year. Uh, we're going to be actually uh, launching the first of the year, and right now we're just gathering uh, the leaders that we need to be able to build. You, we have to have a team to do this because we are on a mission to develop this men's ministry, a viable men's ministry in the local church. Um, and as we develop this out, men's ministry in the box, uh, we're going to take this concept to churches all over the world. Uh, you know, as I'm traveling and ministering in churches, uh, I'm seeing everywhere, of course, that in this area, we have very few men that are actually attending church regularly and definitely not leading in the church. A lot of men are very passive, and I like to see a 50% participation in the church. Now, I'm talking the average church in America. I'm not talking about your mega churches. I'm talking about the average church, which is 75 to 85 people. <clears throat> so the vision is to empower that local pastor through a program called P12 to empower him to build those local men and then to bring those men and involve them into our NBC3 events that are four events a year in his region. So we're coming to you each week from Zoe City Church with Men of Honor. Uh, to encourage you uh, as a man of God. Now, we've been looking at some scriptures. One of the scriptures that we looked at was in the book of Genesis, in chapter 1, uh, uh, chapter chapter 1, yes, and where it says in verse 26, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion. So right out from the, from the very get-go, we see that God wants man to have dominion. Uh, to be in a place of rulership, of domination. We're not talking about dominating the world. And that's one of the things that men sometimes think they're supposed to dominate women. They're supposed to dominate, you know, people. But no, you're to dominate your circumstances. You're certainly to have dominion over the devil. The Bible says in First John, in First John, uh, you know, chapter 3, verse 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So God wants a man to understand his authority and that we have the power and authority to resist the devil. The Bible says, submit yourself there unto God and resist the devil and he will flee from you, James 4 and 7. And so when men have to be submitted to God and the word of God, God's word is first. God's word is who he says he is. God will do what he says he can do. You are God who you are who God says you are, and man of God, you can do what God says you can do. But you've got to understand that that dominion is the original intent of God, and you have dominion over yourself. You know, Paul said it over in First Corinthians chapter uh, chapter nine. I'm going to turn over there, verse 24. He said, "Not uh, verse 27, but I keep under my body and bring it under subjection." lest by any means after I preach to some, I should be a castaway. So being able to, 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 keep, uh, to keep your body, to master your flesh. You know, I, I do a series called Flesh Master. And it's understanding that a man can't be led by his flesh. He can't be led, you know, uh, you know uh, by his sexual organs. He has to be led by the word of God and the spirit of God. And uh, to do that, he's going to have to understand his dominion, that your body is of the temple of God and you have the authority to reign over your body. Blessed be God, that you don't have to be a whoremonger. You don't have to be a part in the pornography and masturbation and other types of sexual vices, unfaithful to your wife, being a molester and a pedophile. Come on. You can operate in supernatural authority over your flesh. So your flesh is under control. Now, you got to understand, I come from a background, I'm talking about a family background, hormones on one side, 
uh, pedophiles and perverts on the other side, and uh, and uh, uh, and all of that was trying to work in my flesh when I was a little kid. But thank God, when the Word of God, when Jesus came into my life, and the Word of God come, I learned how to dominate the flesh and free myself from all of that foolishness that would try to keep me in bondage. And today, I'm a free man, been free, stay free, glory to God. And I know what it takes to operate in holiness and purity and freedom by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. We find over here in Galatians chapter, in Romans chapter 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how should we that are dead to sin live any longer in it? The Bible says that we're dead to sin. Know you not that as many as us who are baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism into death. Just as Christ was raised from the dead from the glory of the Father, we should walk in newness of life. So baptism symbolizes what takes place in a new creature in Christ, a new man in Christ. And that is just like you go under the water and just submerge, submerged under water in baptism. That is representative of your death. You died. The Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Galatians uh, 2.19. I am crucified with Christ. And nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Let these words liberate you and set you free today. Thank God you don't have to be bound by, by sexual. You're out of control. You're just bound by sexual devices and, and sexual passions and sexual urges of all kinds, natural and unnatural, come on out, involved in all kinds of bestiality and perversions of, of all kinds and lasciviousness and uh, 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 lewdness. No, thank God uh, we're, we're men of God and we're holy men that can walk and serve the Lord today in holiness and purity and sanctification, praise God. Sanctification means to be set apart by God as a vessel that is being used. The Bible says that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, Romans chapter 12, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable. So we find over here in Romans, we bear with him in baptism, that like as Christ was raised from the dead for the glory, we should walk in newness of life. Verse 5, if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, that's in baptism, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Verse 6, knowing that our old man is crucified. So the old man, the old John Posey, and that includes not only me, but all the, 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 the generational curses in my flesh that were passed on by my father's who couldn't deal, who didn't know how to learn how to defeat the devil. That's why you got to, you can't pass on sins to your children. Come on, man of God. You've got, it's got to stop at your house. Deal with these demon powers, these things that will try to work, anger and sexual desires and all these different things. Come on, understand you can be free and walk in the liberty of the Lord Jesus Christ. He comes to set you free. And when you know the truth, it'll make you free. Amen. And you'll be free indeed. Our old man was crucified with it, verse 6, that the body of sin may be destroyed in the King James. The word is rendered powerless. So this old body of sin and uh, what's working in the flesh, what's been passed on to generation, just like disease and, uh, and tent descendancies can be passed on. That's why they go in. You know, and you go into the medical doctor, they ask you uh, what was, um, you know, your past, uh, you know, your parents had this disease, that disease, because, you know, it can be hereditary. Well, sin is the same way. It can be passed on. But thank God today we're free from sin and we're free from his grip. So that's all the time I've got to share with you. I just want to encourage you. Be ready next week. We're going to go into part two of this. It'll continue on this subject and uh, be blessed of the Lord and know that you're free uh, from the works of the devil to walk in dominion. Father, we just thank you today for a man of God. I thank you, Lord, this man of honor is operating in the supernatural uh, power of God and the anointing of God, freeing them. I break the power of darkness off of his flesh today. And I thank you, Lord, for liberty 
in the name of Jesus. May he live holy and separate, come out of the world and be a clean man to serve in you in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, week. Enjoy the lesson. Pass this on to a man of God. And be sure to join us on our next phone conference this Monday.